Hey, what's up guys? Wizard in the Block here, or the Washed Wizard of BDO. Welcome to the generic wizard video breakdown guide thingy that I'm about to do. I honestly don't know where this video is going to go, so I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have any questions or clarifications you guys want to know, just let me know down below, and I'll go ahead and answer them. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy. We'll start off with my gear. Yes, it's kind of scuffed at the moment. Don't worry about it. I into my gear quite a bit, so that's that. But this is my gear as of May 25th, 2023. I have Trilabresca. Try Fallen God, Pen Ominous, Pen Crescent, C17 Gloves, Pen Lunar, C7 Nuver, C1 Dandy, C19 Zorka, Pen Kabusha Belt, C20 Aragons, a Bronte's Bolt, Pen Disto, and a Vel's Heart Exalted, as well as our Hunter Clothes. I entered my gloves a little bit every now and again because we are getting our gloves soon. I think in two weeks, as of this point, we are getting our gloves soon, so. Once we edit the duo, we'll be back at C20 again, and all these extra crafters will go back into our new world, which should be around C14. We'll still get the extra AP from there. For your first skill, MMA, feel free to lock this skill if you find yourself casting this skill too often or on accident. For large scale situations, it's mainly only going to be used for poke damage. Other than that, you can feel free to lock it. Next up, we have Earth Arrow, which is one of your key skills that you'll use in one of your combos. Then follow it up with Prime Fireball and Prime Fireball Explosion Aerial. As for your Meteor, you can use either one of these depending on your playstyle. The first one is going to be Meteor Aerial. This will be for bigger AoE and bigger CCs. As the other one focus will be more towards single target damage, a little bit of AoE, not as much as the other one obviously. So depending on your playstyle, see which one works out best for you. As for Chain Lightning, same situation as MMA. If you find yourself casting a skill too often or on accident, feel free to lock it. Next up is Lightning Storm High Voltage. Followed up with Lightning and Residual Lightning Combo. This will be your Lightning Combo. Then you have Freeze, next up with Frigid Fog Disrupt. For your Blizzard, I highly preference using Domain over Storm right now. It still does good damage Storm, but Domain right now is just really good, there's no reason not to use it. Next ones will be Earthquake Evade, and Earth Response to Destruction. Then you have Rain of Fire, your Magnus Skill, your E-Buff, and Bolide of Destruction. As of right now, I am using Aqua Gel. You can still use Equilibrium Break. But because we already Magnus skill, which is a frontal for wizards, I took the extra SA from Aqua Gel. You can use either one again, depending on your playstyle, see which one works out best for you and which better fits your playstyle. As far as your secondary skills, the only skill I personally have locked right now is Dagger Stab because that can conflict with your Magnus skill. The other skill you can also lock is Mana Absorption and put that on a hotkey. Spacebar is pretty easy to misclick, so go ahead and lock that if you find yourself misclicking that and put it on a hotkey. As far as your passives, you want everything here. This is the only reason why Suck Wizard works the way it does. You also want to try and get level 62 so that way you can get Unyielding Might, which is an extra special attack by 1%. For my first Rebrom, I will always use Sage's Light. You can still use Sage's Rage if you know how to use it and frag out. I personally don't know how to do that, so I use Sage's Light, keep everyone else alive and myself. That way everyone else can frag out with healthy health bars. And then lastly, you have your second Rebrom, which is Swift Earthquake, extra NSA. And your third Rebrom, I would, wouldn't bother. If you had to pick one, go ahead and use Lightning Spirit as decent damage if you can get it off. But... For most part, I wouldn't bother about your third or bomb. These are the add-ons I'm currently using. I'm personally bad with making add-ons, so what I do is look at others and combine the ones I think work best together. Luckily, add-ons are not set in stone, so you can continue to test new things until you figure out what you like. As for my artifacts right now, I only run two different kinds right now. One of them being Magic AP, and the second one being Magic Accuracy. You can run two of each, or you can mix and match one another depending on what you need. As far as my lights on set, I don't have that many, I only have a couple. The first one being is target openings. If you can get a strike, this is probably your best priority or highest priority if you can get one. My second one being right now that I'm currently using is the wild, the humans. Extra human damage just for extra damage. And my third one is a really cheap accuracy set called enhanced focus. Gives me a little extra accuracy against those evasion memes. As far as my crystals, on the left side is my uncapped PvP crystals, whereas on the right side is my capped PvP crystals for node wars and sieges. For T2 War specifically, you only need 20% special attack evasion, and because I have a Garmoth in my offhand, this allows me to remove one of these special evasion crystals in my crystal build and freeze up a slot for something else. As for my hotkeys, these are the 5 I currently run. I run my e-buff, elemental palace, speed spell, high voltage, teleport, and spellbound heart. Three of them for obvious reasons, you have to be on hotkey. Elemental palace, your speed spell, and your blue orb can only be used on hotkey, so those have to be on a slot. Teleport obviously being one of your hotkeys as well, because if you have your weapons are put away, you cannot press shift space, which is your teleport input. So say if you're running away, or you're regrouping with your ball, mainly your weapons are put away because you run faster with your weapons put away. 
If you need to catch up or get into a position, you press your hockey, which is your teleport. Your weapons are put out, and you can start casting skills. I personally like having high voltage on a hockey because there's plenty of times where my weapons are put away and there's a ball that comes up right in front of us and I need to stop and do range poke damage and try and stay fully protected. This allows me to do that and go into high voltage straight into lightning combo fully protected. I find this a lot better because if you did lightning combo into high voltage, you start off unprotected and you have a gap in the middle of the rotation, which I'll show off here. You start off with lightning into the combo. You're gonna have a gap into the high voltage. So again, this is why I like having it on hotkey. I can start off with my weapons put away, I can start off protected, and it gets rid of the gap in the middle from high voltage into lightning combo. There's no gap there anymore. You can also run mana absorption or fissure fog instead of the high voltage, but I just found myself liking high voltage more of those three that I've tried out. Next I will be showing a few skills that give off a lingering protection. These are skills where after the skill is done being casted, the animation afterwards continues to have some protection, some being longer than others. The first skill I'll show off is Bullet Destruction. You continue to have the SA until a little bit after the staff touches the ground. Next one is Frigid Fog. You continue to have the frontal until a second after the staff touches the ground. Next up is Earth Response, probably one of the longest SA lingers that you'll have. You almost have the SA protection all the way up until the next Earth Response is off cooldown. Next one is Mana Absorption, which is not bad. It works off hockey as well as the skill input. There's a few protections I didn't get to, which is fine. You get to learn them as you play the class. I tend to linger my skills in order to wait for cooldowns, mainly in my teleport so I can move around more, or my bigger damage skills like Meteor or Blizzard. This also helps me personally slow down my pace if I find myself playing too fast or aggressive. As far as your catches, one of them will be Bola Destruction, which is WC. It is a bound and a down smash. Your next catch will be Fireball Explosion, Shift LMB. It is a KD. Your next catch will be Meteor. It is down LMB, RMB. It does a Stiffen, and it does a KD. You do have one more KD, which is Sage Rage, your first or bomb skill. It is a KD. I personally don't use it because I use Sage's Light, which is the key bind Shift X if you guys were to use it. Your initial combo as a wizard is pretty easy. You're either going to catch him with Bolide, or you're going to catch him with Explosion, and you're going to follow up with Earth Arrow. The reason you follow up with Earth Arrow is because you do a little extra damage, and as well, you also debuff the opponent with minus 50 magic DP. So any skills afterwards will be doing more damage. As for large scale ball engagements, there's no really set order or combo on how you do it. You're kind of just throwing out damage and trying to do what you can. What they may look like, there's something here I can show you guys in a second. You catch your speed spell, e-buff, bolide, frigid, into earth arrow, catch them again with explosion, tp and use blizzard. You still have your tp out so you can tp out one more time, reposition yourself and throw more damage into the ball as you're fighting, if you're still going. I'll show off this first skill rotation, then I'll slow it down so you guys can see what I'm doing. For your catch, you're going to start with Bolide, WC. Follow it up with Earth Arrow, LMB, RMB for the debuff. Into SQ, Frigid Fog for filler damage. Shift LMB for Fireball Explosion for the RCC. Teleport with Shift Space or Hockey to get into position. You're going to finish off with Blizzard, which is Shift LMB, RMB. This combo here is the same thing, but instead you're going to catch him with Fireball Explosion, and then you will RCC with Blue Light. This one's using Meteor as the first catch, and you can follow up with either Fireball Explosion as the second CC, or Blue Light. I like to preface that this is not a set in stone combo on how to play caster and how to use your skills after one another. Every situation will be different depending on what cooldowns you have up. There will be times where you can throw in a lot of filler damage before the second TC because the opponent's on the ground for a long time. And there will be times where you can't throw in any damage after the initial CC because the opponent stands up right away. I'll go a little bit over a mouse movement, but in general open world large scale content is not super necessary. For your teleports, you're generally using it to reposition yourself, get behind an opponent, or get to the side of an enemy that's using a frontal or so. You can also use it to TP backwards if your camera movement is slow, you can TP behind you, rather than turn your camera all the way. 
Oh, let's go to the mouse move would be the blizzard. Move your blizzard around. You can also mouse move your earth response. So in the direction you face, your wherever you leave your mouse, that's where your earth response is gonna go. That one's never really needed, but it's a neat little trick you can do. The main skill I do tend to move mouse move a lot would be my earth evade. I kind of just use this to reposition myself, run away, get beside the enemy, behind the enemy, so that way I'm not right in front of them. And just as a reminder, when the skill is on cooldown, it's no longer SA. It's only SA when it's not on cooldown. If you use an equilibrium break, you can also mouse move that. You can also mouse move some of your SA skills, so that way you can reduce back attack damage. So if you can hit from behind, you cast the SA, you turn your camera around. Not super necessary, but it's a little tip. Your magnet skill, you can also mouse move, rotate around you. I personally like to only rotate things behind me. If it's in front of you, say you're in a semicircle like this. If it's in front of you, you can mainly use your, you can generally move your camera around. But if it's behind you, that's when you can mouse move. Because that's where you're less vulnerable, that's you can't see behind you. If it's behind me, I can use my mouse move, turn it around behind me. If it's on my minimap, I can see it. If you want to get better at mouse movement, I generally use it in PvE, RBF, and generally open world. Because I'm pretty used to it nowadays, but that would be my suggestion if you really want to try and get good at it. Also, to use it with a purpose, don't just use it to use it. To be fancy there's a lot of times where you're just gonna outplay yourself so use it with a purpose don't just use it just to use it like that a couple more tips i have is to learn your range or learn your aoe's know how big your aoe's are how big your heals are for example if you cast pa it's gonna give you a bubble it's gonna show you how big your range is same with your heals you kind of see a general pulse around so you can see how big your heals are same with your small heal how far you can reach same with their speed spell, see how many people it affects around you. Small tip with heals also. If you see your allies right there, and they're getting CC'd, don't dive right on top of them and heal them. Try and stay within the range of your heal, which is why it's good to know the range of your heals. Stay at least within range so you can heal them from afar, but not get caught in the CC. Have the others around you do the damage and peel off for the opponent while you heal everyone else. I'll probably end it here, but I'll kind of summarize my top 5 tips as playing caster. First thing would be know your range, know how far you can hit somebody, know how far your heals go, and how big your PAs are. Second would have to be stay mobile and to always have a movement ability up. You always want to stay moving, not be a sitting duck. Don't try and cast 10 skills at a time in the same spot. You're going to get hit. Try and move around, reposition yourself. Third would be probably to know your kit and know your cooldowns, know what you can do, know what you can't do. There's some things that you're better at than other classes, so try and prioritize those that you excel at. My fourth and probably last tip would be strictly in group PvP and node wars. Is try not to solo PA or PA when it's not called for. If you PA too early, it's going to fuck up everyone. People go on a cooldown, they don't get the PA, and you're going to fuck up your push, so... Let's not try and do that. If you're going to solo PA, do it by yourself out in the open, go hero play, but try not to do it within a group. Alright, that should be it for me. It's kind of a general, hope you guys enjoyed it, I don't know. Kind of just like a little mishmash of everything, but uh, if you have any questions or you have any, any clarification on things, just let me know down below. Or you can catch me on Twitch, Wiz on the Block. Uh, I'll be there live occasionally. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time.